Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I'm Abhishek Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Ruling complex JDS coalition leaders in Karnataka intensify their efforts to reach out to dissident legislators. Goa cabinet to be reshuffled this afternoon. President Ramnath Kovin calls upon legal professionals to ensure easy access to legal assistance for the poor. Continuous rain causes havoc in eastern and north eastern parts of the country. And in Wimbledon tennis, Serena Williams to face Simona Halep in women's singles final today. A day after Karnataka Chief Minister H D Kumaraswamy made a surprise announcement in the assembly that he would seek a trust vote efforts have intensified to reach out to dissident legislators by leaders of the ruling coalition Deputy Chief Minister G Parmeshwara and Water Resource Minister D K Shivakumar met Housing Minister M T B Nagraj at his residence this morning They requested him to withdraw his resignation submitted to the speaker Similar attempts are also being made by Congress leaders to convince MLAs Ramlinga Reddy, Muni Ratna and Roshan Beg. Sources in JDS said Chief Minister Kumaraswamy is in direct contact with at least four Congress legislators who have resigned and was hopeful that they would withdraw their resignations. In a bid to keep the MLAs together and safe from poaching, BJP, Congress and JDS MLAs have been kept in different resorts near Bengaluru. The Supreme Court yesterday ordered the speaker to maintain status quo on the resignations of 10 rebel MLAs belonging to the Congress JDS coalition till July 16. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawant will reshuffle his cabinet today replacing four ministers. The swearing-in ceremony would be held at 3 p.m. Mr. Sawant disclosed this on returning to Goa from New Delhi after meeting the BJP's central leadership late last night. The chief minister said that three members from the BJP led government's coalition partner Goa Forward Party and independent MLA Rohan Kunti would be dropped from the cabinet. He informed that three MLAs who merged with BJP from Congress recently would be inducted into the state cabinet on Saturday while the fourth replacement would be a BJP MLA. Meanwhile, Deputy Speaker of Goa Assembly Michael Lobo has resigned from the post. He told media persons that he has resigned as he will be inducted into the cabinet last wednesday 10 congress mlas joined the bjp increasing the party's strength to 27 in the 40 member goa assembly president ramnath govind has asked legal professionals to enable the poor to get justice on par with the rich in society addressing the special convocation of the tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university in chennai this morning He said it would be a travesty of the republican ethic if a poor person did not get the same access to law as a rich person. There is a need to enhance legal literacy and simplify legal rules. It is important to not only take justice to the people but also to make it understandable to litigating parties in a language they know. perhaps a system could be evolved whereby certified translated copies of judgments are made available by the high courts in the local or regional languages he called upon all those in the legal profession including judges lawyers and court officers to ensure the primacy of the rule of law president kovind observed as the nation keeps evolving the legal profession is also undergoing drastic changes and said the legal students now find many avenues open to them than any time in the past a two day swachhata campaign began in the premises of parliament house in new delhi today lok sabha speaker om birla and several ministers including defense minister rajnath singh and external affairs minister s j shankar participated in the cleanliness drive besides several parliamentarians and staff of parliament house also took part before initiating the drive The union ministers and MPs offered floral tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at his statue. They also took the Swachhata pledge. Speaking on the occasion, the speaker Om Birla said, "It is the commitment of every parliamentarian to ensure cleanliness in every village and city of the country." 
ये संसद परिसर का स्वच्छता अभियान नहीं है दिस इज नॉट द क्लेनिनेस ड्राइव ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्री माइसिस ऑन बापूज हंड्रेड फिफ्टी बर्थ एनिवर्सरी विद मेंबर्स ऑफ लोकसभा हु रिप्रेजेंट वन थर्टी करोड़ पीपल हैव टेकन प्लेज फॉर क्लेनिनेस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हैड गिवन ए क्लेरियन कॉल फ्रॉम रेड फोर्ट फॉर क्लेनिनेस इन इंडिया वेदर इट इज इन विलेजेस और सिटीज वी ऑल द एम पीज टूगेदर हैव टेकन प्लेज फॉर क्लेनिनेस एंड प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट किस तरीके ऐसी पर्यावरण शुद्धता हो सकती है ये संकल्प हमारा है Speaking on the occasion, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh also appreciated the cleanliness initiative undertaken by the Lok Sabha Speaker. यहाँ तक स्वच्छता अभियान का प्रश्न है भारत में As far as cleanliness is concerned, the Swachhata Abhiyan has become a mass movement in India. An awareness has come in the mind of public regarding cleanliness. Awareness has also come on the benefits of cleanliness, purification of environment, and health benefits. Keeping this in mind, Lok Sabha Speaker Mr. Om Birla took the decision for a cleanliness drive in the Parliament House. Mandi Om Birla ji ne bhi is Parliament ke andar Swachhata Abhiyan karne ka yeh faisla kiya hai. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has stressed the need to introduce an education system that teaches concern for the oppressed and destitute. He was addressing students after laying the foundation stone for Dr S Radhakrishnan Auditorium at the Regional Institute of Education of National Council of Educational Research and Training in Mysuru today. The Vice President said the draft national education policy aims at creating a resurgent education system that emphasizes on improving the teaching skills of teachers make them competent innovative and skilled to face the challenges of modern society he will be able to articulate better in your mother tongue and moreover language and culture they are interconnected so they need to be preserved together that is the importance and in india we have 22 scheduled languages even this 22 scheduled languages also they are not getting adequate needed due importance army chief general bipin rawat has said that with the changing warfare scenario in recent times the indian army must be prepared for future conflicts he said after 20 years of kargil war the nature of warfare stands constant but its conduct has changed as new emerging technologies are playing a crucial role in it general rawat was speaking at the national seminar on 20 years after kargil conflict organized by center for law land warfare studies in new delhi today talking about the advent of innovative and scientific approaches general rawat said cyber and space domain have changed the nature of battlefield therefore the army must take into account these realities He said future conflicts seem more violent and unpredictable hence the army's strategy and response must be well planned and integrated This is All India Radio giving you the news for quick news updates follow us on Twitter at @AIR news alerts Continuous rain is causing havoc in the eastern and northern eastern parts of the country In Assam, swollen rivers including Brahmaputra have submerged roads, cropland and residential areas in 21 districts affecting nearly 9 lakh people. National parks and wildlife sanctuaries are also submerged. District administrations have intensified relief and rescue measures. Talking to AIR Revenue and Disaster Management Minister of State Bhabesh Kalita said that Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal is monitoring the situation. About 70 tahsil or revenue circle badly affected one, 1500 villages affected one, 20 large hectare crops area affected one. और हमारा एन डी आर एस डी एफ बाइन को हम लोग डिप्लॉय किया और जितना सेंटर है वो लोग को हम लोग का तरफ से रिलीफ मेटेरियल राइस दाल ऑयल सॉल पेट्रोल फीट सारा कुछ दिया हुआ और हमारा असम के माननीय मुख्यमंत्री सर्वानंद जी एन पी आर सिचुएशन को मॉनिटरिंग किया और हमारा डिपार्टमेंट का जितना सीनियर ऑफिसर सब लोग को हम लोग लगा दिया मिनिट टू मिनिट सिचुएशन लेने के लिए In Arunachal Pradesh the incessant torrential rains are causing landslides and flash flood disrupting road connectivity and damaging houses water supply pipeline bridges and agricultural land two persons have lost their lives and an equal number is missing in rain related incidents 
In West Bengal, vast areas in Jalpaiguri and Alipurdwar districts have been inundated due to continuous rains since last few days. Water level of Tista, Kerala, Joldhaka and its tributaries are in spade. Road communication with Darjeeling Hills and Sikkim from Siliguri has been disrupted due to landslide at various places. Rail communication is also hampered. Med Department has predicted heavy to very heavy rains at different districts in North Bengal today also. In neighboring Nepal, incessant rains wreaked havoc and claimed 28 lives so far. 16 persons have been missing. Our correspondent reports the Rai region is the worst affected. Normal life has been affected in various parts of Nepal due to continuous rainfall. Many areas of Kathmandu and Bhaktapur were submerged in rainwater yesterday. In Tarai, hundreds of houses have been damaged by rain and thousands of people shifted to safer places. Many highways were also blocked due to floods and landslides. Meanwhile, rescue and relief operation is underway in full swing. Water level in various rivers is increasing and some are flowing above the danger level at few places. People living on the banks of rivers and nearby areas have been advised to be on higher level. But according to weathermen, rain is likely to continue for next couple of days. Raj Kumar, AIR News, Kathmandu. The high-level delegations from India and Pakistan will meet at Atari Wagha border tomorrow to discuss issues related to the Kartarpur corridor. The main issues include connectivity at the zero point and the number of pilgrims to be allowed, especially on the special occasions. Sources said India will raise its concern over the security aspect also. New Delhi had earlier conveyed its strong concerns to Pakistan over the presence of a leading Khalistani separatist in a committee appointed by Islamabad on the project. Prasar Bharti chairman Dr. A. Surya Prakash has said India is not only the world's largest democracy but also the most vibrant. Speaking at a session on religion and the media at the Global Conference for Media Freedom in London, he said it is also the most diverse society in the world. The Prasad Bharti chairman also pointed out that India has a free and responsible media. Minister of State for Jal Shakti Ratan Lal Kataria has appealed to the people to make India open defecation free ODF along with cleanliness campaign by making it a nationwide movement. He also called for an effective action plan for water conservation by adopting latest technologies. The minister was speaking at the two-day national planning workshop on ODF Plus and water conservation in New Delhi today. Meghalaya became the first state in India to ensure conservation of water through its own water policy following a nod given by the state cabinet yesterday. The draft policy was approved by the state cabinet in a meeting chaired by Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad K. Sangma. After the meeting, Chief Minister Sangma said in a tweet that it is historic for Meghalaya as the state has become the first state in the country to have a state water policy. The objective of the policy is to recognize water resources as common pool resource to provide safe and hygienic water for drinking, domestic and sanitation and livelihood development to all residents of the state. Among other things, the draft state water policy which seeks to protect and improve management of water resources while actively involving the community. It also aims at ensuring protection and conservation of catchment areas of all water sources to prevent degradation of the quantity and quality of water sources. Samir Verma for AIR News, Shillong. In Wimbledon tennis, the women's singles final between 11th seed Serena Williams and 7th placed Simona Halep will be played today. Meanwhile, 8-time champion Roger Federer has set up the men's singles title clash with world number 1 Novak Djokovic. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Ruling Congress JDS coalition leaders in Karnataka intensify their efforts to reach out to dissident legislators. Goa cabinet to be reshuffled this afternoon. President Ramnath Kovin calls upon legal professionals to ensure easy access to legal assistance for the poor. Continuous rain causes havoc in eastern and northern eastern parts of the country. In Wimbledon tennis, Serena Williams to face Simona Halep in women's singles final today. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com. And with that, we end the midday news.